Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, co-founder of RackN, and we are back for part three of our provision on packet using iPixie sequence. In the, in the last couple, we have used digital rebar provision to stand up. Um, first, we installed it on a base server, and then we installed the discovery image that we call Sledgehammer onto a server. And uh, packet has really nice infrastructure for this. I've been showing how to use it and set custom iPixies based out of the quick start for digital rebar. Um, and then my packet servers here, I now have two running. Both of them have my keys injected in it. I've been able to SSH into both of them um, and validate that the system is, is doing its thing and working. Um, what I want to do now is not have them running our discovery image, but actually install an operating system like Ubuntu. So to do that, what you'll notice here is in my boot environments, I only have these four, discovery, ignore, meaning do nothing, local, which is boot to the local disk, and sledgehammer. I need the CentOS uh, image, or the Ubuntu image is what I'm going to use. So let me jump over to that. I'll go back to our server. So this is where I have our server running. You can see the API calls that have been running in the background. And what I want to do um, is first set the TTY for Ubuntu to pack it. Um, so before I do the import of that service, I'm going to go in and look at my boot env for Ubuntu 16.04. And you'll notice in here we have our TTY. I'm going to set that to TTY1. And then for this one, I need to remove these extra TTY values. Make, I'm looking to see if my, yep, my quotes need to close. And so now what I want to do is I want to go into uh, digital rebar provision. If you looked at the first video, um, this was done for us when we did that import, that bootstrapping command. Now I'm actually installing a boot environment. So I need to go to, into a boot, boot ems. I have to tell it to install. And this time we've, we've bundled some functionality together so I can just install right from the file. It's not just a YAML post because install does a couple of steps for you. What it will do is it will create the boot environment, but it also inspects the boot environment to get the ISO that needs to be downloaded, downloads the ISO, which is what it's doing right now, and then imports it into digital rebar provision, explodes it, and makes it available. So a lot of functionality. I'm running this on the server because it's, it's super easy for a demo to run everything in one place, but this is a Golang CLI, so you could run it from any client, Windows, Linux, Mac, um, an ARM server, it doesn't really matter, and then do these actions from your desktop. And so this is an important thing, right? We don't just automatically pull things in from the provisioner. You load the provisioner so that it has uh, resources available. In this case, you'll see I now have five boot environments. One of them is Ubuntu. And Ubuntu's installed. Um, I waited long enough that the ISO is installed and uploaded. So everything's ready to go. What I want to do next is go ahead and set my environments over to be uh, Ubuntu. And so I can, I'll go ahead and change both of them to go and set up a, a boot environment install. Back to my packet install system. I'm going to tell both of those to reboot. And that's it. So at this point, it's now going to go through and run the Ubuntu boot env and install Ubuntu in the systems. If I got my TTYs right, um, which I'm not guaranteeing, uh, then I should be able to actually watch the Ubuntu install. Uh, we've been futzing with this, and so it's not I'm not guaranteeing that I got those settings right. We'll probably uh, get them better as we go. Let's see. So this is my install. You'll see the normal Pixie, and when it hands over to Ubuntu, if my settings are right. You'll get to actually see it install Ubuntu and, and take action on this. Um, but once again, super cool that I can actually watch the iPixie process live uh, from the system. If you wanted, you notice that this one didn't, this one didn't work the way I was expecting. Um, this should be iPixie 2. So if I come into my iPixie 2 uh, and pick console, grab the settings there, and then try running that. Maybe I got them mixed up. 6D. Yeah, this is going to be the same one, so that's not useful. Uh, let's jump into the other. My Pixie 1. Grab this console. Let's 
and I should be able to watch this one booting also. Right, so this is what I'm what I'm seeing. So if you see this, then it's still running in the background. It's just not giving me console output. So it started the process, uh, and then it's not it's no longer sending console output. It will just before it finishes give me some console output because the setting is partially correct. Um, and in this process, we're just going through and waiting for the system to complete installing an operating system, uh, which takes a little bit of time. That's why it's nice to be able to watch it. Uh, other things to look at for digital rebar provision, um, I could, if I wanted, um, take an extra step. So in packet, over here, if I want to create a brand new system, oops, I'm going to get lazy on my cutting and pasting. So here's my the IP address and my DRP. Obviously, you could run multiple of these, on change the ports, and do all sorts of cool stuff. You can actually see my provisioning cycles. So if I come over here, I add a new server, uh, my Pixie 3, naming convention works, stick with it, and custom my Pixie, my Pixie URL. Of course, you can do all this from their API. Back to Sunnyvale, I want to manage this to persist. Good. And now when I go to deploy it, It's going to go th go through the system. It's going to give me an IP address, and uh, because of the timing, I can come in and before the system's gone through uh, much provisioning cycles, I have an IP address. I can come over to Digital Rebar Provision. I can add a new machine. My Pixie Three Foo Dot Bar. Give it an IP address. Tell it what final state I want to install to, and save. And in this case, this machine is going to be identified by its IP address and it will skip the discovery process altogether and go straight into installing Ubuntu. So I don't have to go through this custom discovery process. Um, that's really useful for burn-in and testing and making sure a system's right and potentially messing with its uh, hardware security infrastructure. All that's really important, but if you're just trying to provision the same thing over and over again in packet, you you want to be able to add in an IP address into the machines table and then run it uh, directly from a boot env. And we have that capability uh, in this infrastructure. And uh, this is what I just demonstrated for you. Uh, and what you'll see is this isn't finished booting here. Um, I could play my console tricks and and get its ID. Um, it's going to be a little while before that before I that happens. So if I wanted, uh, I can jump in. I need to get its uh, unique identifier. Copy that over here. So instead of watching these screens not do anything, uh, tilde period, and then uh, I can put in this new machine's address. And it's going to come through. Yeah, we're still in a configuration cycle. Um, so watch, we're watching. Don't, don't cover your eyes. We're watching packets. Uh, I mean, now we're just watching their pixie. Um, it's, all, it's all good. So at this point now, we're just going through that process and provisioning uh, those nodes. I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to watch me try and cover for the time it takes to install on a type zero server and uh, come back when the system's uh, in, a, in a workable state just to show you that it completed. Okay, so I took a little break, came back. Let me show you where we are. So uh, the screen looks like chaos, um, but what it's actually doing is it's showing me my login screen for Pixie 3 is up. So I can root rebar one and log in. Once again, not what we want to be doing. This is um, Huh. Sorry, this is Ubuntu. Um, so this isn't where I want to be doing my work. I actually want to be SSHing in, which I have over here. Uh, we're going to try and SSH in. Of course it's going to fail because I have reinstalled the operating system. So we need to remove my key. Coming back in, and now I have logged in, SSH back into my Pixie 1 boot environment. So, uh, oh, and uh, let me uname for you. 
So, and this is my Ubuntu 1604 system, all installed using Packet. So, start to finish, um, installed Digital Rebar, took a couple minutes, Digital Rebar Provision, sorry, took a couple of minutes, uh, set the Pixie, iPixie systems in Packet uh, to Pixie boot against that. I installed uh, the Discovery operating systems, I installed the Ubuntu operating systems, and then I set uh, the next boot to uh, that infrastructure and installed Ubuntu using the system. Now I, I strongly recommend you come back into uh, the digital rebar docs and read around. There's profiles, there's uh, configuration parameters, there's all sorts of settings that you can do. This is really API driven infrastructure automation at its most foundational level uh, and we are constantly adding new pieces and parts into this infrastructure to make it easier to use and much, much more powerful. Um, so if you have questions, please reach out. Uh, I'm Rob Hirschfeld. Uh, you can reach us. I'm Rob at Rackan or Zeekle online. Um, we'd love to get your feedback and input on this. We'd love to hear how you're using it uh, and how we can make it better together. Thank you very much. Have a great day.